What is going on, YouTube Savage here? In today's video, we're going to be breaking down and analyzing a viewer submitted quads gameplay. This falls into my series Oversimplified, where we basically discuss all the things that the guys we're spectating are doing right and the things that they're doing wrong, as well as the enemies that they encounter. Hopefully, these lessons and situations that you get put in can help teach you guys how to avoid getting your ass killed. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolf Pack today. Also, let's get this video to 1,500 likes. And as always, if you're tired of playing with randoms and you want to find some confident squad mates, make sure you join our Discord community and utilize the Looking for Groups page to your advantage to go out there and get some wins. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, without wasting any time at all, we're landing out here on the outskirts. We got a helicopter that the enemy team just chalked completely for no reason. And yeah, lesson number one. Don't be thirsty. Don't be hungry. Play smart. Stop tunnel visioning on the enemy and following them like a little puppy dog and get baited to your death. That's exactly what's happening right now. So Banda, he is hopping through the window to go after our squad mate. But little did he know, he got baited right to us. Again, guys, don't always just focus up on the kill. Try to make some kind of outplay or maneuver by working cover and working buildings. For example, this guy right here, definitely instead of chasing in the window, he probably should have went around the building, come up another way and probably grab the gun. In an instance like this, the enemy team, since they're in such a bad position, all one of them had to do was go around and find a weapon. Meaning don't instantly push the squad Grab a gun, and as soon as you get something good in your hands, then go in and push them. There's no reason to just file into your death one by one like that. Also discussing the helicopter. Not sure what the hell the plan was there. I'm going to be honest. I already know it in their heads. Both teams wanted the scavenger, but don't risk losing the chopper over that. Because if your teammates are already in a position where they're getting shit on, you can just fly away. Hope to God they win their gulag. And if not, you have a chopper where you can do supply runs to get them back. And you don't even have to worry about going for scavengers and things like that to get your teammate back. It puts you behind a little bit, and especially if you guys waste the chopper. But anyway, now we're rocking three kills. We squad wiped that entire team. Possibly. There's another enemy over there on the scavenger. Could be the, the fourth player. I wasn't really paying attention to... Uh, the savage! I know, I'm sorry. I wasn't really paying attention to see if we actually got all four of them. I'm going to be honest. This fucking, this gun's over here. All right, right now, I'm not sure exactly where the enemy is, but the enemy is clearly by himself, at least from what we can gather right now. So it may be the fourth of the other team. But anyway, what is he doing? He's hiding, right? That's the last thing you want to do in this position. Look how much cover we did not have when we had to push to him. Yes, our teammate had a Bertha, but all he has to do is open the door and he can blow us away. We have no cover. We have to move at least 30, 40 feet before we can even get safe. Um, very easy kills for the enemy in this position. This fucking, this gun's over here. Next objective located. Where is he at? He's in this I don't know why he laughed. I don't know why he was laughing. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Dude sitting in a corner. Trying to drop shot and then celebrate it. Mind blown. Anyway, again, guys, not the move. If he really oh, yeah. want to make a play of it, he could have because, again, we had no cover. Now, I'm going to go off a limb and completely assume that these guys are landing back from the gulag to get vengeance kills, right? Guys, I'm all for going for vengeance kills. You want to get them as much as you can, but why the hell would Junior Squad land on the team that just shit on you with pistols? Right? That doesn't make any damn sense. Bail out, live to fight another day. This is just ignorant right here. This is just... And, and, and what are you doing? Don't hold your parachute and float around, Mary Poppins. Calm down. Come down to earth, grab some guns, and help your teammates fight. I don't know what the hell he's doing. But the fact they landed here, regardless of it being the same team or not, they, they heard gunfire. They should have known we were close by. They should have made a better decision to divert to another area and then fight us once they're looted up. There's no reason to land on a squad that is loaded out with ground loot or their loadout weapons when you only have your pistols. Hmm. 
this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I really need to discuss buying loadouts anymore. I'm pretty sure everyone, right? Everyone understands buying loadouts is priority. I would imagine. I hope. All right. Now, as far as this guy's concerned, let him get his teammate back. Just, just let it happen. I wouldn't waste my time with this guy. There's a guy right there across the ravine marked on blue. Great identification. Let's go push him. Again, guys, if you're trying to speed up your tempo, whether you want to play aggressive or passive, again, the objective is to kill their players and make sure they don't kill you. So if I know where a player's at, I want to kill them first. We know there's a guy on blue ping. Let's go ahead and take him out, right? The most wanted bounty is going to be a very hard push because there's only a zip line going up to that. And good luck, right? Good luck. He could literally squad wipe you guys as you're coming to the zip line. So don't even waste your time with it. And I love the fact that we're not. And we're going to go off and hunt the guy on blue ping. And the only reason I say that, a lot of you guys are thinking, but Savage, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, no, it's not, bro. We, too many times we spectate players that are literally sit there and they will just hold that tower and wait for five, ten minutes until someone jumps out and then they miss the kill anyway. So again, guys, stop wasting time. This squad identifying that and pushing the blue ping. Here we are now jumping on the vehicle early to try to get a different position. Meanwhile, green's going to rotate from the far um, northeast side of the building, and hopefully we can kind of pinch these enemies. Look at orange ping right now on the down slope as well. Um, again, look at the mini map right here. This is a perfect example. When you have enemy teams camping in buildings, it's very hard for them to watch every direction. Some good squads, some great squads will definitely watch every direction, but most of the time, if they're camping in a building, they're probably not as gas as they'd like to think. Um, so all I got to do is confuse them by hitting them from multiple locations. Again, you have green going on the north side. You have orange on the down slope of the south side. And then us in purple are coming in from the east. So no matter how many targets are in this building, it's going to be very easy for us to focus on one. And the moment we get a knock, of course, we're going to push in. Or at least we should. I have no idea why the hell he was out there. If you guys are going to camp a building, you need to commit, right? You need to just stay in that wait for you to get a pick and then y'all can rotate this guy is out of cover sitting in the middle of, of dirt um just kind of zooming in on nothing i don't really know what his plan was right there but it wasn't a good play and for that it cost him the down that was a pretty simple team wipe right there good shit Great pings and communication from Green right there. I got a UAV from a dead body. Even though he was down, he didn't sit there and scream, I'm down, oh my god, cheater, hacker, camp and pussy, none of that stuff, right? He identified uh, where the enemy was at, using the ping, using his voice, and uh, just made it very easy for his team to push in there. All right, but in a situation like this, look, we just got the team wipe, mark the satchels, everyone get loaded up, and it's time to go off and fight again, right? Or we can shoot his dead body too. That'll work. I f with that. No. Hey, there's a daddy right here. And again, at the moment right now, again, whether you want to play passive or not, I always recommend UAVs. If you want to play passive, use UAVs to hide from people and run from people. That's fine. But still use UAVs. They're a huge benefit no matter how you want to play. But again, if you want to get aggressive, and I highly recommend get aggressive so you can get good at gunfights. If you're avoiding people playing too passive and you can't shoot, not really going to help you in the long run oh man you don't have to drop yeah. 20 30 40 kills to be a good player but you definitely want to feel confident with your gunplay if you're in a one-on-one -on -one. and again right here i want to see an increase in time i want to see an increase of, of tempo right now great down but what are we going to do with that down he may be by himself right but probably not okay because we, so we have a uav right now and i believe his teammate has one as well there's a free loadout drop behind us to the north hand side and we're still focused on this tower. This is what I do not want to see anybody do. This is what I want to see players get out of the habit of because you guys could drop a lot more kills than you probably realize. You guys can break your PRs a lot more if you just speed up your gameplay, especially if you're already playing in a lower tier lobby. You guys could destroy it just by speeding up the tempo and getting out there and doing shit. We have a UAV up right now. We're nowhere near a target. I would have called the UAV, but I would have moved away from this spot first and then called it in because we just fought at police station. We sat here for about three minutes and no one came. So I would assume this area is clear. I would have gone up the hill, moved more in the circle where I would think people are at. Military base is pretty much an obvious. Um, then pop the UAV as I'm getting closer to it. There's a guy coming down the hill right there. No idea what he's doing. <laughs> Whatever. Sometimes you run into people like that. They just want to die. It is what it is. It is what it is, man. 
Yeah, and also, when you look at the map, when you when you pull up the big map and you have UAV up, you need to identify where the pings are. A lot of times, people will go to the closest ping if there's one player there, right? There's one little dot on the mini map. But let's say there's five or six, a little bit further away, complete opposite direction. That's where I would focus on going. I want to go ahead again, fight as many people and kill as many people as possible. That way, I can go ahead and take them out and they won't kill me later on. I don't really like to see people waste the UAV to go after one kill. If he happens to be on the way to more kills or happens to be on the way to rotation, by all means, go ahead and do it. But don't go out of your way to hawk down one guy because he's a little bit closer than the group of six or eight people. And with saying that, good shot. And with saying that, don't be afraid to go in there when there's six or eight dots because it's a third party situation. You're coming in to clean up the kills. So definitely take advantage of it on that. They bought their buddy. All right, kill this fuck out of the sky. We've also got a guy on the right-hand side, according to the mini-map right, right now. It's, oh, oh, never mind. He's, oh. he's, he's hauling ass away. Where was that from? The two dream from. Look at this guy. Look at this. No. Never. I don't care if you're in plastic lobby. I don't care if you're in paper bag lobby. Don't do this, please. Stop ADSing when you're out in the middle of nowhere. There's a reason why your top-tier players aren't ever caught up in a position like this. This is just basic common sense. This is something you need to get out of the habit of doing if you guys are struggling to getting out of bronze lobbies. This is why you're still in bronze. This is why your KD is struggling. Focus on cover, then shooting the enemy. There are situations you're going to run into where you're going to have to say, screw cover, I need to go ahead and start shooting and suppressing the enemy, and that's fine. But if they're not shooting at you, there's no reason for you to be standing in the middle of the street, slowly walking to the side while you're under scope. That makes no damn sense at all. I'm not doing them. Here we have his teammate too going up there for the res. Pretty ballsy. Um, he definitely had a decent angle to get the res off, but as accurate as our sniper is right here, I probably would have just let my teammate bleed out or push from a different direction. Um, for instance, he ran out of the left side of that. Let's rewind the video real quick. All right, so for instance, this enemy right here came out of the left side of firing range, right? Why? He knew we were up here. If I was this enemy, instead of just hauling ass out in the open with zero cover, I mean, you have a pole and that's it. Um, I would have gone a little bit further down and exited through the doorway that's right here that you can't see because of the tent. But there is a doorway right here which he could have safely gotten to his teammate. Got him too. Right here. All right, right now, Purple's oh, no, pushing up too. Pur Purple did a really good thing by pushing the enemies and getting in their face. It forced that last guy we sniped out the left-hand side of firing range instead of coming down south and actually able to grab his teammate. So good uh, pressure by Purple to force him out of there and make it a very easy headshot for us. Great sweep with the look at this guy. Look at this dude. Ooh, he seemed he seemed semi cracked. He jumped when he shot. He, he's definitely he's, he's a little cracked, right? But Savage, he died. Uh, you you win you some, you lose some. All right, I'm gonna cut a lot of this out. But basically, we've been in firing range for about an extra say minute and a half. Um, not really a huge fan of that again, dude. We just spent a minute and a half trying to exchange cash, and one person picked it up, and we had to drop it for the other person. And it's just a waste of time. We knew there's a guy over here because of the big Bertha park there. And again, I love the fact yeah, they did so pay attention to the map. Notice the, there was a big Bertha over there called in the UAV. They confirmed it. Now here this guy is. Look at this. What, what is your plan, bro? Are you going to grab that most wanted bounty or no? He's thinking about it. There it is. Thank you. Give us more money. Now, if you're in the enemy's position right here, he had been in this bunker for literally at least a minute and a half, right? At least. I don't know why he didn't pick it up instantly. I don't know why he didn't pull the Bertha up to the front gate. So when he did get the most wanted bounty, he could just hop in the Bertha and drive off. He put himself too exposed. He sat there for way too long thinking about grabbing it and it cost him his damn life. And honestly, that's what he deserved. Again, like things like this again, money, right? Money. We need UAV. We feel more confident as players fighting people if we know where they're at, right? Hence why a lot of cheaters use wall hacks. They have a little bit more confidence seeing through walls. Well, if we pay attention to our money, we could buy two UAVs right now. It could really help us out in situations. I understand we just got a team wipe literally as I was talking about this, but what if there was another team up there hiding in the buildings or something like that? We could possibly put ourselves in bad situations just by not using our money correctly. Oh, we have four enemies camping on a building. Weird! Who would have thought? Now, a push like this is going to be pretty ballsy. For me, for one, I'd probably... I don't know. If you guys are competent snipers, by all means, push across on foot because the moment they peek, you can just snipe them. Very easy. But if you're not a decent sniper, 
I'd grab that Bertha and drive over there and push them and get in their face in order to get the shots off. Um, with them sitting there, they can hold those windows, hold the doorways, hold the rooftop, and make it very hard for us to push. So vehicle's probably oh the best God. bet. We have another enemy vehicle. I think is a different team. It should be. There's four pings. We'll see. This right here is dangerous. How? Oh my God. However, I respect it. Right. I want you guys to notice. He put himself out in the open to take shots at the vehicle. However, while he was spraying at the vehicle and breaking their armor, he was moving himself back because he realized he was out of cover. Great decision because the guy on the rooftop, the guy in the windows could easily have taken us out if we were sitting still focused up in tunnel vision on the vehicle driving by. Again, I want to see you guys shooting at vehicles because it's very easy to knock these sons of out of the vehicle. Um, but again, don't tunnel vision to the point where you get blown away. Pro camper, yo, his name says it all. I mean, I guess I can't really be mad at you. He kind of gave us a warning with your name, right? But what are you doing? What is that? You're on the rooftop. You're sitting here watching us shoot at the vehicle and still, instead of focusing on the guys that are actually shooting their weapons, you're focused on the vehicle that's driving far away and it's not even in sight anymore. Look at the mini map, it's not even near us, right? He's already around the corner, he's already gone. So this guy's looking down, I don't, I don't know, man. Sometimes. I mean, his name, his name says it all. Why am I mad? All right, but now we got a pick. Now it's a 4v3 situation. Oh! One over here. Great ping. Good angle on this guy, too. Look at this. The enemy pushing across by himself. Extremely questionable. Not really sure what the hell he was thinking. Now that he's down, I would definitely keep my eyes on the building again because they may push across and try to get in our faces now that they're outnumbered. Great, great read trying to hit the heartbeat to see if that's the case. There is an enemy actually under us pushing up right now. Switch to the FFAR. Look at this. Now, as far as his teammate, bro, look, look, at, look at what they did. Look what this enemy team did. Now, a lot of people are like, Savage, why do you show us this slow born gameplay? I want to see people dropping 40 kills. Well, 40 kills is cool. There's a lot you can learn from that. But honestly, most players need to learn from mistakes that they make and mistakes of others. Hence this right here, right? So we have Pro Camper and his squad camping this big ass building. But for some reason, when Pro Camper dies, they all lose their mind, right? This guy goes off one way by himself out in the open, no cover at all. Don't know what the hell he was thinking. But then when he went down and died, player number three said, I'm gonna do the same but the opposite way, right? So he comes across in the open by himself and the same outcome, right? The whole term, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, is pretty helpful in a lot of situations. This is not one. This is insane right here. Do not do this. If you guys are continually doing the same and it's not working out, stop it, change it up, right? Hence teamwork. If your teammates go out by themselves and run out in the open, they die. Maybe you should think to yourself, uh, I probably shouldn't do that. So give a little bit of credit to the guy camping in the building still. He said, no, you guys are crazy. I'm not doing that. However, however, Savage, you're getting really passionate right now. I know, I'm sorry. However, because teamwork, man, I don't know what it is about teamwork, but I get real heated. If you guys are going to camp, if you guys are going to push across, do it together, right? Do it together. This guy right here, in his head, he probably wants to suppress fire. However, because we're playing the wall so efficiently, he can't get an angle on us and we're able to blow his boys away. So what they should have done was either stayed in the building or not being in the first place or push across together, trying to get a pick off, not just saying screw it, I'm gonna run across, not even ADS, not even look at you. I, I just, I, I, I don't understand why people do this still. And again, you don't have to be a goaded, cracked out player with the best accuracy in the world to realize that this is a bad idea. I feel like I may be wasting my breath even talking about this, but this is the shit we spectate time and time again in all forms of lobbies. Regardless though, you gotta give credit to Sickle. Great reads on the situations, kind of identifying what's going on right here. And now this 4v4 has quickly turned into a 4v1. And I think the rest is basically self-explanatory because he didn't push across with his teammate. He's gonna be sitting in a corner, sitting on top, sitting on the roof, sitting somewhere. I'm sure prone, crouched. Um, oh, okay, I stand corrected, my dude, Shredder. You gotta give credit to him. Nor like that's what I would tell you to do. I would tell you if you're in a position where you're bad and you're being pushed, knock out the enemy team as they come by you one by one. He tried, he failed, but at least he tried. So props to the homie. Man, that's something I was not expecting to see from that squad. From anyone on that squad, I should say. Damn, when you have a teammate named Pro Camper, maybe you should drop him as a friend. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. If you wanna camp, you can camp.
All right, here we are now pushing the bounty that we picked up. Trying to play aggressive. These guys are going to be sitting on the hill. It's going to be a very hard push. Really hard to ah. If you want to push, that's fine. It's not really an extreme position. Um, They have the higher ground. We have no idea how many there are. They could be laying in bushes and shit like that. It just really depends if you're going to waste your time. However, it doesn't matter. We have an enemy shooting at orange on the hill. Look at them sitting perfectly still. Look at that. Stop, guys. <laughs> I hate to see it, man. I hate to see it. The dude's literally sitting perfectly still, not moving, not sidestepping, not using nothing. Just, hey guys, hope you have a car 98. Now, where his squad is, is going to be a great question. All right, we got the pings very spread out. Not really sure on that play either. I respect what that man right there is doing because he's trying to push up on our side. I respect that. No idea what the hell the guy that was on blue mark was doing to us i'm gonna be honest all right we just had big bertha get out on the left hand side we need to be careful of that however they're probably gonna be buying back teammates or buying something uh hence why they part next to the buy now here are the three other players we got a head sitting right there as well we need to be careful i do not recommend ever reloading while in your scope the reason being is if you're popping your reload you want to keep your body moving you don't want to just sit there and do this because just like the guy we sniped on the hill that i was making fun of we're kind of sitting stagnant. Granted, at least you're moving side to side a little bit, but still something I don't recommend. Um, pop that reload, get to cover, finish the fight, but live to fight another day. Repositioning. The green rose. Watch, watch fire. I love the fact that instead of just beelining right down in the open, down the street, we're using the wall as cover, using all these uh, barricades and things as cover. We got an enemy on the right-hand side as well, rotating back. I think they got the reses up. They had some really good cover. Guy at the back of fire station, but again, focus on the guy at the tree. We just saw his head peeking over. He may have ran back. He's not shooting at green right now, so I would imagine he ran back, but right now we still have a good position. We still have a ridge, right? The moment we saw the team fall back to fire station, I would have instantly pushed. The reason why I would instantly push is we do have these trees right here, and I want to push before they have the time to crawl up that ladder and get a good spot to suppress us. I don't want to run back. Hey, people in that Bertha. They got that. They bought back. The enemy team does have to come to us, right? So it just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to go ahead and get this fight one so you can move on to the next one and go for, you know, your kill PR? If so, then definitely recommend pushing that soul and getting that fight taken care of, and then you can worry about everyone around you. If we sit here and we gatekeep, we put ourselves in a position to where we're focusing on these guys, and we may get third party in the process. Still not a bad decision. You just have to weigh the risk versus reward of both options. Look at this. Look at this guy. Oh, sh I should have hit. Oh my god. That, is, that down somebody. Well, that down the driver, honestly. I think we're getting sniped on the left hand side, too. All right, the circle just started moving. We got a minute and 48 seconds left before, before the circle collapses, but they have about a minute for them to be able to sit in that building. So again, this is very vulnerable. This is this is why I said risk versus reward. It's not a bad idea to gatekeep. However, what is around us? What do we need to do? What's the positioning we need to get to for the next zone? What scares me about this is the fact that we're kind of in the open, right? We're vulnerable from the hill right here. We're vulnerable from the right-hand side as well. We don't think there's enemies over there, but there may be. But that's not even the scariest part. The scariest part is even if we win this fight, how do we get across this open field and get to a better position after this is after this fight is won. That's the question. But even with that, again, third party is such a huge issue with 39 players left in the map. It being a military, this is scary because there's a lot of high ground surrounding us right now. And here we are running around the corner trying to change our angle on the enemy, which I respect, but again, getting third party by a whole nother squad that have just taken advantage of the fact they heard our suppressed shot and they made their way to us to get more kills. Because again, guys, even if you're not out there playing for PRs and playing for 10, 20, 30 kills, whatever, other players are, right? So if you are sitting there gatekeeping again in the open, you run a huge risk of getting third party. This is why I always tell you guys, win your fights fast because your fights take too long that they're prolonged an extended period of time. You're going to have another try hard sweat squad come to you and shoot you in the back or they'll come in and steal your kills. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we won the gulag. They won the team fight. So good squad we should have enough time to grab our shit. and uh oh no oh no can you grab that satchel can he grab the satchel can he do it <laughs> oh 
Oh, and now this is the other scary part that I was talking about running out in the open after other teams have heard a shooting, they're going to be gatekeeping as well. I, I thought that was a guy too. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's the tip of a tree. Oh, it is a guy. Okay. Holy sh**. Oh, he jumped over my bro. I, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was, but know. damn. All right, circle has now rotated to more to the north. Again, we're in a position. We got to rotate out in the open. Two more enemies up there. They have an angle on our head, and there's the glint with the sniper hit. Unfortunate. We are rocking 16 kills. We have momentum, but again, dude, it's going to be a very, very ballsy fight for us. Purple just going out there, challenging the enemy. I do love the aggression I see from Purple. Um, I'm trying to see where he was, what he was doing, what he was going for, what cover looks like around him before I say anything it looks like purple was at a wall and he just got picked so i don't think purple put himself in a bad position i think he just went to go challenge the enemy and the enemy outshot him yeah now right now green needs to get his to purple to get that res off you hear the sniper shots i want you guys to notice while green is about to run across he's also suppressing the enemies before he runs and so is orange i do love the fact that blue is not helping with that normally i would want all of your teammates to help suppress but because of the position we're in because of how many enemies are left and because we have to move across the open um we need to start prepping for that transition so i love the fact that instead of blue helping with the squad he's relying on his teammates to actually make the plays and he's going to clear out the north hand side and hopefully get some picks if needed so we can push across the safety just oh. just keep shooting oh. keep shooting keep shooting please oh, no. oh, no, no, no. beautiful knock we got a live ping right here Ooh, yeah, going in with the ffbr hopefully picking up No tactics, no lethals left. The better the better option was to fall back to cover instead of pushing him because if you push that missile silo right there, what's gonna, or it's not a silo, but if you put push that missile machine or whatever, um, what's gonna happen? He might have a stun, he might stun you, and then you're screwed. And as far as other enemies around us, I'm very surprised we're not being third partied. You have five other enemy teams left. Everyone should be on the high ground at this point, whether it's on top of the bunkers, whether it's on top of the hill, no matter what the case is, they should be on the high ground. Um, and no one's really shooting at us in the middle of that fight. That's a little, little crazy. Orange has a gas mask. We're good. We're good, boys. There it is. Finally, enemies peeping to try to make a play. As far as the team in the bunker, very unfortunate for them to be playing the back end of that. If they just would have been looking out the front or on top of it, they could have gotten some really nice shots off on us, stolen the kills we were fighting for, and also probably taken us out in the process of rotation. Now, if this circle goes north, it's going to be an even harder fight because remember, we had the most wanted bounty that was on top of there earlier on the very edge of the circle, as well as the bounty that we ended up not doing. So there are possibly two teams up there both of which very nice clear line of sight Broken armor. but before we worry about the guys in the hill we need to fight these guys here now you want to focus on these guys but again don't forget about the dickheads that are going to be camping on the left hand side right notice how sickle is literally playing in the wall instead of just running out in the open and lolly -da, da and slide canceling and bunny hop and all the crazy sh He's aware of the fact that everyone else is going to be over there. He needs to focus on the squad here. Now, we don't have to move right now. You don't have to push that squad. You can if you want, but it's very dangerous because you do have to go in the open. We can just sit here and wait for them to get pushed out because, judging by the circle, they're going to have to leave their little hiding spot before we do. And at that point, what's going to happen? They're going to die. Going back to the fact that I said that these guys, instead of camping inside of there, should have been on the hill. They should have been looking out the front. They should have killed us, and they wouldn't have been in this position in the first place. There's people already here who's got position on us. Uh, they, they, were, they were sniping at us. No, I have no extra place. Yeah, I got zero place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dropped two, I dropped two. Where? Oh, sure. I'm right here. Now, as far as the other enemy squads, again, dude, and this is something players fall into a lot. Right here, right here. Nobody should let us leave this little area. People need to be peeking the hills and notice how they're just sitting in bushes. This is what I was leading to right here. Instead of having the high ground and playing the position and looking over the ledge and shooting down on your enemies who are very vulnerable, they're hiding in bushes. I don't care if there's one, two, three, four, sixty-eight 68 of you guys. There's no reason to ever hide in a bush unless you're plating and in the middle of combat 
that's the only one. If you have no cover and you need to get the safety to plate up and you lay in a bush for three seconds to put your plates on, that's fine. But when you have position, when you have angle, when you have the game in your pocket, this is the sh right here that people do to throw the game. Weird! Who would have thought? There we go. And I'm sitting on 19 kills. Ladies and gentlemen, five enemies remain. It could be a 1v4v4. Not really sure again. Um, Get the fuck up here. Holy shit. All right, we have... We have some enemies on the peak right here. And again, these guys right here have the best position. This is the hill that I'm really talking about as far as looking down and shooting the enemies. They should have never let us cross the street. They should have never let us leave the bunkers. They should have never have let us sit here and shoot at them out in the open as well. And here we are in this yeah. position regardless. Now, also, guys, don't forget about the guy that was in the bunker. We never did kill him. And again, I think it's a 4v4v1. It could be a solo that was in the bunker on the right-hand side. Some very... uh. I mean, we're very vulnerable right now. He may have died. Maybe that's why we left. Oh! oh lo and behold, there is one enemy. I'm so dead. With the snipe off. You're right. We should be dead right now. But for some reason, the enemy squad is not taking advantage of the fact that we are now third partied. We are now in a position where we shouldn't be. One goes down. One's underground right here. Good pings by Sickle while he's down. Instead of and complaining and pinging and doing call outs is what you need. Another guy up there trying to get the ping off. You can see him trying to live ping, unsuccessful, but still putting the ping down nonetheless. Great team play. Good shit. I don't know what happened, but GG. But Wolfpack, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Again, the whole principle behind the series isn't to show you guys bad gameplay. It's cool when we do upload it, but the main purpose is to help you guys learn from mistakes by putting you in the position of other teams and having you watch and analyze how they actually play. Not only will that help you avoid making those mistakes, but it will also help you show you how other people play so you don't get surprised by some random tactics that they may be doing. But again, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video. But until next time, you have a good one and good luck in Warzone.